Ang ganda nung kina. Thank you. 
prayers. Bold prayers honor God. God honors prayers. Ulitin nyo nga. And God honors bold prayers. Huwag kang mahihiyang humingi ng malaki at marami sa Diyos. Pag nagdasal ka, itodo mo na ang prayers mo. And just like what I have said to my friend, I believe God is telling you today, it's my joy to give the best to you. So whatever it is that you need, humingi ka na ng malaki because you need to trust in His generosity because it's God's joy to give the best to you. Amen? Let's come into prayer. Close your eyes, bow down your heads. Put your hands over your chest and repeat this prayer after me all together. Father in heaven, I believe I am swimming in an ocean of your goodness, blessings and favor. But forgive me for the times that I doubt your generosity. Help me believe that you want to bless me. Help me believe that it's your joy to give the best to me. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my path. Give the Lord a big hand. Praise His name. Please be seated. As you sit down, tell the person beside you, trust his generosity. Before I begin my talk, I'd like to greet all those who are watching online. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope that this video, that this message will bless you. And thank you also for your generosity for giving online through our uh, through online means. Maraming maraming salamat po. And if you are watching online, can I just request that you... Share this video so that we can reach more people for the Lord. If you are also here, please visit our page. You can do so. You can click. You can share it on your news feed so that we can get to spread the word of God. Amen? Yeah. Pero sana yung mga nanonood ang online, ang prayer ko. We only have two more, uh, two more feasts before we end the year. Wala po tayong uh, feast on, ano ba ngayon? December 3 ba ngayon? Wala po tayong feast ng December 24. At wala rin po tayong feast ng December 31. So, uh, December 10 and December 17 na lang. So, I hope and pray that you come here. Especially dun po sa ating December 17. It will be our Christmas feast, our last feast as well. But let me jump off to my talk. And our big message is this. Trust His generosity. Sabi nyo nga. In the past few weeks, na-discover natin kung gaano, kung paano nakita ni Jesus yung mundo in a very unique way. Jesus believed in a universe of plenty governed by His extravagant Father. And to Jesus, the world is one big party, isang malaking feast because the host of the party is very, very generous. And let me start off by sharing to you the story. So, ang saya-saya ng party so one day, there is this huge party and the host, isang mayaman na tao, nagpa-party siya sa mga, mga kaibigan niya at ang dami-daming bisita. Ito ang problema. Ang saya-saya sana ng party, overflowing with food. Ito ang problema, biglang nagkagulo. Bakit? Ang dami sa mga bisita niya, sobrang takaw dun sa party. Kain sila ng kain hanggang umabot na sa punto ng masuka-suka na sila. Pupunta sila sa banyo pagkatapos sila kumain. Susuka sila sa banyo. Bakit? Gusto nilang kamkamin lahat. Gusto nilang kainin lahat. To the point na magkakapatong na yung mga plato nila. Not only that, marami sa mga bisita nagkagulo. Bakit? Maraming mga bisita. <coughs> Sharon yan. Alam niyo yung Sharon yan? Mahilig magbalot. Diba? Ang dami na nga kinaim. May bit-bit pa ng mga ziplock. ba? Yan ang hack na gusto kong ibigay sa inyo. Kung wala ka, nagtitipid kayo ngayong Pasko, pag umatin kayo ng Christmas party, magbaon lang kayo ng ziplock para meron kayong pang ulam, pang baon, sa opisina, sa school, in the weekdays. <coughs> Pero maraming saron yan. Habang sila ay nagbabalot, kumakanta pa. Balutin ng lechon, 
Mga lobster at kesong sobrang mahal. Tapos nilalagay nila sa mga bag. Yung iba ang lupit, pati sa bulsa. Nilalagay, may lobster sa bulsa. May keso, may leksyon. Grabe. But here's the worst of all. Yung ibang guest, gumawa ng sari-sariling grupo, sari-sariling gang. Anong ginagawa nila? Grupo-grupo sila. Anong ginagawa nila? Sinesecure nila yung isang buong buffet table. <coughs> Walang gustong papasukin. Kapag hindi nila kabarkada, hindi nila kasamahan, pinapalayas nila, ayaw nilang bigyan ng pagkain. At dahil dito, nagkagulo-gulo dun sa party, nag-away-away ang lahat. In fact, nagsuntukan pa all, of the, all over the place. Ang gulo ng party. Pero itong tanong ko sa inyo, isn't this a picture of our messed up world today? There's greed. There's gluttony. There's division, there's pride, there's selfishness. Our core problem, anong problema natin? Tarang nyo sa akin, ano? Our core problem is similar to that story that even if there is abundance everywhere, people only see scarcity. So they scheme, they struggle, nambubudol, and they squabble constantly, away-away. Yan ang sad state ng mundo natin ngayon. Pero alam nyo, in the Sermon of the Mount, in the Gospels, Jesus talked about the glorious abundance around us. Anong sinabi ni Jesus? Basahin natin yung word natin for today. Sabi dito, You have heard the law that says, Love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say, love your enemies. Takbigin mo ka tabi mo, sabihin mo sa kanya, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For He gives His sunlight to both the evil and the good. And He sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. Nakita nyo kung gaano ka generous si Lord? His abundance is not only for the good, but also for the bad people. But let's continue the story. Jesus goes on to say, sabi ni Jesus, If you love only those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you are kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. <coughs> Alam nyo po, napakaganda nitong binasa natin na Bible verse. When you think about generosity, bakit yan yung Bible verse? May explain natin yan. But you see, in this in this Bible verse, um, you need to know that in Matthew 5, Matthew chapter 5, Jesus mentions the word, you have heard the law that says, six times. And in this case, he said, and then after, after saying, you have heard the law that says, Jesus says something so revolutionary, it shatters all expectations. For example, in this passage, ano sabi ni Jesus? He says, you have heard the law that says, then he quoted Leviticus 19.18, love your neighbor. But then Jesus adds, sabi niya, and hate your enemy. But teka lang, teka lang. Alam nyo ba that the law in Leviticus does not really say the second line? Wala yun sa batas ni Jesus. Ah, sorry, wala yun sa batas ni Lord, ni Yahweh na ano, that you can love your neighbors and hate your enemy. Wala yun. That second statement was not in the Torah, in the Old Testament. Walang hate your enemy sa commands ni Lord. However, bakit sinabi ito ni Jesus? Jesus said it because that is how the people think during His time. In fact, their minds were so twisted, they twisted God's command, and then here's what they do. Because during that time, the people during Jesus' time, they only cared about their family and friends. They cared only about their tribe. But, anong ginagawa nila? Basta solve yung pamilya ko, solve yung tribo ko, ay, okay na kami. And what do they do? They go to other tribes and they went to war with other tribes. And they believe na okay lang sa Diyos yun. Bakit? Because they believe, ha, we are the Israelites, we are God's chosen people. Kaya kami ang chosen people ni Lord, yung lahat, kaaway namin. Yun ang problema. But then Jesus, in this passage, corrects them by saying, Ano sabi ni Jesus? But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. 
Na-imagine nyo yun? Yung kaibigan nyo, sorry, yung kaaway ninyo, pinagdadasal ninyo? Yung iba siguro, brother, pinagdadasal ko naman yung mga kaaway ko. Pero ang pinagdadasal ko, sana makarma sila. Di ba? Pero, nakita nyo yun? In other words, Jesus was saying, yes, anak ka ng Diyos, you are already God's children, but Jesus is telling them, if you only care for your own clan, if you only care for your own family, if you only care for your own tribe, you are not acting like your father. You need to grow up. Because life is not just about your immediate family, immediate tribe. You are meant to bless everyone. Hindi pwedeng kayo-kayo lang kay Lord. Bakit? Kasi yung biyaya at pagmamahal ng Diyos ay para sa lahat. Hindi lang para sa iyo. That's why Jesus reveals His Father's character by saying, kung nagpakilala kung sino, pinakita ni Jesus kung sino talaga yung tatay niya. Anong sabi ni Jesus? Sabi, balikan natin, sabi. For He gives His sunlight to both the evil and the good, and He sends rain on the just and the unjust alike. Hello? Hello? Gusto ko maging honest kayo sa, sa akin. Di ba pag binasa natin yan, parang medyo disturbing. God sending sunlight and rain on evil people? Parang unfair. Di ba? Because in our minds, anong inisip natin? Hindi pwede yan. Bad things should happen to bad people. Bad people deserve to suffer and be punished. Deserve nila ang hindi mabiyayaan ng Diyos. But let me ask you this. Why are we disturbed by Jesus' challenge? Bakit tayo nababagabag itong simple statement ni Jesus? Why? Ask me why. Because our sense of fairness is violated. Gusto natin napaparusahan yung mga umapi, mga masasamang tao. Example, sino sa inyo mahilig manood ng pelikula, Taas ang Kamay, o kaya Netflix, kung ano-ano mang series, Taas ang Kamay. Di ba? Kapag may pinapanood kayong tayong movie, Sobrang satisfying. Sobrang satisfying kapag nakita natin na yung kontrabidang ng aapi, sa ending siya naman yung inaapi. Tama ba? Sobrang satisfying kapag nakita natin yung nang agaw ng jowa, siya naman ang inagawan. Sobrang satisfying kapag yung manloloko, siya naman yung naloko. At anong sinasabi natin habang sila ay nagduru sa ano sinasabi natin? Mm. Tinga sa'yo. Tama o tama? Di ba? It's so satisfying. It's so cathartic. Buti nga sa'yo. Justice. That's what you deserve. Di ba? Bakit? Yan ang problema natin. Gusto nating mag-apply sa Diyos bilang God's assistant executioner. Gusto nating mag-apply kay Lord. Lord, I want to be your assistant punisher. Yung tipo kapag ang parang kung nasa pelikula, gusto nyo parang, Lord, pwede bang mag-apply? Ako yung taga-sampal ng mga masasama, taga-bato, taga-puna ng masasamang tao, pero gusto ko sabihin sa inyo ito, sorry ah, pero hindi hiring si Lord ng assistant na mag, magpaparusa at mag-execute sa mga masasamang tao. Why? Because God, our God, is not a vengeful God. He's a merciful, loving, generous God who lets the sunlight shine on both the good and the bad. Listen. Pakinggan nyo. Alam ko, malungkot pa kayo sa nabalitaan yung balita. Tatlong araw na, pero may kurot pa rin sa puso. Eleven years eh. Diba? Eleven years! Eleven years! Pero itong gusto kong sabihin sa inyo, ha? Yung iba, G na G dun sa lalaki. Gigil na gigil. At gigil na gigil dun sa pinalit na babae. Kita ko, kita ko sa newsfeed, mga feasters, gigil na gigil kung ano nire-repost. Grabe. Napuyat pa yan. Pinanood yung live ni si Yan Gasa. Alas dose imedya na, huy. Nakanunood ka pa. Paano ko alam? Nanood din kasi ako. Pero itong gusto ko sabihin sa inyo ha, si Lord, pareho niyang mahal yung iniwan at yung nang iwan after 11 years. Parehas. And this will shock you, 
mahal niya rin. Pati yung pinalit after 11 years. Habang ikaw, habang ikaw, hmm, sige, sana, makarma kayo, sige, iiwang ka din niya. Pero tingnan niyo, hirap sikmurain, di ba? Ganun po. Ang kabutihan, ang generosity, ang pagmamahal ng Diyos. Ang problema ito, we have a flawed fairness logic. When God blesses us, when we don't deserve it, we thank you, Lord, you're being generous. He's being generous. But when God blesses others who don't deserve it, what do we say? Lord, you are being unfair. Pero gusto kong paalala lang sa inyo, ha? Sikuin mo ang katabi mo, sabihin mo sa kanya, huwag kang magmalinis, kaibigang putik. Remember, we are not always the good person. All of us here, sometimes we are the bad person who received undeserved goodness from God. And let me tell you this, God loves every sinner, including you. Hindi ba't ang ganda nun? Lahat tayo mahal ng Diyos. Kahit na ano pang kasalanan natin. And God challenges us to a higher calling. Ano sabi ni Lord? If you only love those who love you, what reward is there for that? Even corrupt tax collectors do that much. If you're kind only to your friends, how are you different from anyone else? Even pagans do that. But you are to be perfect even as your Father is perfect. Question, can we be perfect as in no fault, as in, no, as, as in blameless? Definitely not. Si Lord lang ang perfect in that way na walang pagkakamali. But the word perfect here in Greek is teleioi. Sabi nga teleioi. Which means to be whole, to be complete. So what is Jesus telling us here? Jesus is practically saying this. If you want to be whole, if you want to be complete, you need to love and be generous not only to your tribe, but also to your enemies. You need to imitate God's radical generosity in order to be whole, to be complete. The question is this, how do we imitate God's generosity? You need to do this first and foremost. You need to trust His generosity. Trust His generosity. Because we can love and we can be generous to our enemies. Bakit natin kayang gawin yon? Because we believe, listen to this, that it's not our enemies who will bless us and reward us. God will be the one to bless us and reward us. Kaya kaya mong mahalin yung kaaway mo. And let me tell this, it's better to be blessed by the blesser himself than to expect our enemies to repay us. Remember this, pagka si Lord ang nagbigay sa'yo ng pagpapala, sobra-sobra, grabe, it's more than enough. And remember what I said earlier, it's God's joy to give the best to us. Kaya, kaya mong mahalin yung kapwa mo. Kaya mong mahalin yung kaaway mo. Kaya mong magpatawad. Kasi hindi naman siya magbabalik sa'yo ng blessing eh. Si Lord. Am I making sense here? Now let me go back to my story of the problematic party. Ito na. Nagkakagulo na sila sa party. Nung nagkakagulo sila sa party, there were three people. How many? Three people who were trying to bring back order in the party. Sino yung tatlong tao na yon The cook, the waiter, and the party host himself, yung may-ari ng bahay. And they went around speaking to the guests. And each of them had a specific message to the guests. Yung cook yung nauna. The cook was the first one to speak. And this was his message. The chef went out and then he told everybody, Uy, 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 uy! There's no need to hoard. Huwag na kayong mag-away-away. There's overflowing food in the kitchen. There's enough for Everyone. That's the first message. There's enough for everyone. Sabi mo sa katabi mo yan, there's enough for everyone. But the guests didn't hear him. Yun ang problema. Bakit? Because more than the chaos around them, mas maingay yung sigaw, yung inner noise na nasa puso nila. Because in their hearts, greed was shouting. Greed was shouting, kumuha ka lang ng kumuha. Sige ka, baka maubusan ka. So kahit na maraming, there's enough for everyone, Our fear of scarcity drives us to just take and take and take and take, making us greedy in the process. Amen? Let me share to you this story. One day, merong isang anthropologist, and he was studying this remote African tribe for some time. 
he was working in in their tribe dun sa sa in the in the African desert and then so he has stayed there for a long time and on the day that he was ready to leave paalis na siya meron siyang binigay na reward sa kanila in fact nagpa-game siya anong ginawa nitong anthropologist na ito kumuha siya ng basket and then in that basket he placed a lot of delicious fruit nilagyan niya ng ribbon sa taas at nilagay niya yung basket na yon under the tree. So nilagay niya yung basket under the tree. And then he gathered all the kids in the village and then he drew a line on the dirt dun sa lupa tapos sabi nitong anthropologist, okay, maglalaro tayo ng game. When I tell you to go, kayong mga bata, paunahan kayong tumakbo papunta dun sa fruit basket na yon. And whoever gets there first, sa kanya, yung entire fruit basket. Ganda nung game niya. But you know what? Nung sinabi niya, go, alam niyo ginawa ng mga bata, ang dami la. The kids, you know what they did? They all took each other's hands and they ran together. Sabay-sabay sila hanggang sa marating nila yung fruit basket, sabay-sabay nilang dinampot yung fruit basket. And then they sat together and they ate them with so much joy. Alam mo, gulat na gulat yung anthropologist. Sabi niya, this is amazing. And then while they were eating, the anthropologist asked them, why did you run like that? Hindi niyo ba alam? One of you could have gotten all the fruits for yourself. And then a little girl said this. The little girl said, how can one of us be happy if all the others are sad? How can I, how can any one of us be happy if all the others are sad? And then children told them, told him, Ubuntu. Sabi niyo nga, Ubuntu. Alam niyo ano yung Ubuntu? In Zulu or Sosa culture, Ubuntu is not just what they did, but Ubuntu is their definition of what a human being is. For them, listen to me, their identity as human being is always tied to other human beings. At itong konsepto ng pagiging tao na ito, it's very difficult to express this concept in this modern Western language. Why? Because tayo ngayong mga tao, we are so highly individualistic. Tayo, everything is about me, me, me. Self-fulfillment, self-satisfaction, self-realization. And every single day, anong nasa isip natin? The most important questions that we ask, am I getting what I want? Am I getting my dreams? What's in it for me? Am I happy? In fact, even 16th century philosopher René Descartes thought, ang iniisip niya, I think, therefore I am. Very individualistic. But Ubuntu says something very different. Ubuntu is this, I am because we are. Sabi niyo nga yan, I am because we are. And Ubuntu is telling us that life is about belonging to a community and serving that community. That's what it means to be human. That we are all connected. That your identity should never be just about yourself, but it's always tied to a community. The story teaches us na ano, you need to hold hands with others when you run towards a goal. And then when you reach it, you sit down and then you eat together, you celebrate together because I am because we are. This is the paradigm of Jesus. Na ano, hindi kailangan magagawan. Hindi kailangan magunahan. Why? Because God's fruit basket is enough for everyone. Si Kuy mo katabi mo, sabihin mo sa kanya, there's enough for everyone. Next, it was the waiter's turn to speak. Yung waiter lumabas. Shock na shock siya sa sense of entitlement ng lahat. And he goes out to shout all the guests and tell them, Bakit kayo nagsaswapangan? Bakit kayo nag-aaway? Bakit kayo nagdadamutan? Nakalimutan nyo na ba? You received all this food for free. You own nothing. Sa tingin mo katabi mo, sabihin mo sa kanya, you own nothing. Sadly, the guests thought that they own everything in the party. 
Kaya, they were doing their best to guard it, to accumulate more food for themselves. Pero hindi ba ganun din ang problema ng mundo ngayon? People have forgotten that everything they have is a gift received from the generosity of God's hands. You own nothing. We own nothing. Alam ko, magaling ka magnegosyo. Alam ko, grabe ka magtrabaho. Pero kahit anong galing mo, I know you built what you built right now, that career, everything that you have, pinagtrabahoan mo yan. Pero gusto kong sabihin sa inyo ito, bigayan lahat ni Lord. Sabi mo, sa tatabi mo, sabi mo, bigayan ni Lord. Kaya hindi ka pwede magyabang. Andito ba si Tex tsaka si Camille Sarmiento? Wala. Baka mamaya, second session. I would just like to honor one of our key leaders here in Feast Bikutan. They are about to migrate to Canada in two weeks. And Tex and Camille Sarmiento has been with us, with me, ever since tinayo natin itong feast noong February 2013. They are one of the first key leaders. And if there's one thing I love about them, it's their unwavering generosity from 2013 until now. At alam nyo, itong mag-asawa, they are so faithful in their generosity, in their giving. Kapag merong big equipment na kailangan, kailangan ng laptop, alam nyo, so sabi na brother, kailangan ba ng laptop? Lalabas siya ng pera. Ito, binili ko yung laptop. Donation namin sa Fisbikutan. Pag kailangan mag-need, ng need, kaya need mag-raise ng giving, they were there, silang nangunguna sa pagbibigay. And you know what? Kapag may nangangailangan na kapatid natin dito sa FIS, they were there. Nagbibigay sila, tumutulong sila. And here's what I, I noticed. I have seen them grow financially, and in all aspects of their lives. They have been serving the Lord. They have been growing. Binibless sila ni Lord. Palaki sila ng palaki. Pa- paasenso ng paasenso. They were growing abundant. But you know what? One thing that kept them and blessed them is that they are in- and waveringly faithful in their generosity. At nakita ko paano sila binless ni Lord through the years. Tapos, kapag ka sinasabi ko na, uy, Thank you, ha. Thank you sa donation nyo. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for giving this to the feast. Ang lagi lang sagot nila, lalo na si Pix. Ano yan eh, medyo mahiyain yan. Very humble yan tao na yan. Sabi yan, wala yun. Bigay ni Lord yun. Bigay ni Lord yun. Sabi nyo nga yun, bigay ni Lord yun. Wala yun, bigay ni Lord yun. And, alam nyo, even during the pandemic, pandemic, Dito ko nakita yung karakter talaga nitong mag-asawa na ito. During the pandemic, yung negosyo nila, ano, bumagsak ng konti, nag-decline. Hindi masyadong nag-grow. In fact, nabawasan talaga sila ng kita. Pero alam nyo, during the pandemic, they are still one of our biggest givers. Patuloy pa rin nagbigay. Tapos sabi ko sa kanila, grabe kayo. Alam kong kailangan nyo Alam ko, nahihirapan kayo, pero bakit nagbibigay pa rin kayo? Bawasan niyo konti. Ako na nga nahihiya eh. Kasi sabi ko sa kanila, maintindihan ni Lord yun. Pero ano sabi nila? Wala yun. Bigay ni Lord yun. Tapos ito ang sabi niya, kahit naman bumababa income namin, never naman kami pinabayaan ni Lord. Kasi kung yung mga katabi yun, sabi mo sa kanya, bigay ni Lord yun. Grabe yung perspective nila, no? Others who enjoy financial success might say the other three-word statements such as, I earned this, I built this, I worked hard for this, I deserve this. There's nothing wrong with those statements per se. Hindi po masama yun. Totoo naman, pinagtrabahuan natin yan. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, you must know the ultimate source of your blessings. And if you believe that everything flows from God's hands, then we know we own nothing. Daluyan lang tayo ng biyaya. Our, our wealth simply passes through our hands and you become generous, giving it to others because we become generous like the God that you worship. Pero alam nyo, ang ganda ng statement nila, bigay ni Lord yon. Pero mas gusto ko yung second statement niya. Ano sabi niya? 
never naman kaming pinabayaan ni Lord. Kaya kahit sa panahon ng kahirapan, kayang magbigay. Which brings me to the last message. This time, the host of the party, lumabas yung may-ari ng bahay, he asked a penetrating question. Sabi niya, one by one, he went to the guest and they were t- telling the guest, My friend, what are you doing? Bakit ka nag-iimbak ng, ng, ng pagkain? Anong ginagawa mo? Bakit mo sinasara yung buffet table? Ang dami pang parating na pagkain. And then he says this, Don't you trust me? Don't you trust my generosity? And today, God is asking the same thing. Do you trust my generosity? My generosity. At alam niyo, some of the guests, natauhan sila, nahiya sila, and they started to let go of their selfish ways. Na-realize nila na ano, hindi naman kami pala papabayaan itong host ng party. They realized the abundance that is right in front of them. So what did they do? They started to share and be generous to the other guests. Malamang ganito rin po yung naramdaman ni Zacchaeus. Kilala niya si Zacchaeus? He was a tax collector. Ang dami niyang niloko. But when he met Jesus, three, ano, nagbago siya 180 degrees. From being man loloko, anong ginawa ni Zacchaeus? Sabi ni Zacchaeus, from now on, I will give half my wealth to the poor. Lord, and I, if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Grabe, no? Change of heart. Why? Kasi nakilala niya who God really is. Kapatid, if you trust God, you stop steaming, you stop hoarding, you stop fighting, and then you start giving with generosity. The question is this, listen to me. Will you trust God and be generous like Him? Or will you trust the voice of fear in your heart? This fear that says, there's not enough for you. Which are you going to choose? The choice is yours. But I pray that you will have the grace to trust His generosity. Amen? Can I invite you to stand up? Tapingin mo ka, tabi mo, sabihin mo sa Kanya, never kang pinabayaan ni Lord. Pwede ako maging totoo sa inyo ngayong araw na ito. Alam nyo, meron tayong malaking problema. <laughs> Ang feast, likutan. <laughs> bakit? Ano sa akin, bakit? Last, uh, two weeks ago, sumulat yung cinema management ng SM Bikutan. At sinabi sa atin, na increase yung renta natin. Alam nyo po, para sa kaalaman ninyo, ang binabayaran natin dito every Sunday is 42,000 pesos. Renta pa lang ng cinema yun, ha? Tapos biglang sinulatan tayo, sabi, from now on, your your rent will be 61,000 pesos. Grabe yung jump, no? 42,000 to 61,000. Magano difference? Yung iba, maghirap nun, ha? <laughs> 19,000 pesos. So, we have a new problem. Sabi ko, Nako Lord, alam nyo po, our giving is just enough for us to get by. Nas, kumbaga, yung, 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 yung love offering natin talagang kapit na kapit. <laughs> Grabe talaga, yung kapit na kapit na. Yung talagang pagka tipong merong isang nasirang gamit dito, talagang guguho pang lahat. Tapos biglang, biglang i-raise. Imagine yung 19,000 pesos a week. So, ano naman natin pupulutin yun? Pero alam nyo, for some reason, nung narinig ko yun, I am concerned, but I'm not worried. Bakit? Pero yung sa akin, bakit? Kasi kilala ko si Lord. We have been here for 10 years already. And if you have been with the feast for 10 years, there are many ups and downs. Nagsara na tayo ng feast. Nangyari na ito, kulang tayo sa pondo, kulang tayo, hindi yari lang paano magbabayal, pero naitawid tayo ni Lord. I know who my God is. He is faithful. He can do that. And I trust His generosity. And one of the reasons I'm not worried is, I not only trust in God's generosity, but I trust in your generosity. 
Alam ko, may pambayad tayo noon every week yung 19,000 na difference. Alam nyo, saan mang gagaling? Tunggu saan, saan? E di sa inyo. Sa ating lahat. Nasa bulsa natin. Nasa Gcash ninyo. Bakit? Because our community is a community of Ubuntu. I am because we are. And you see, hindi ko natatakot. Because I know all of us here believe that we have a generous God. Amen? At kung tinawin niya tayo noon, itatawin niya tayo ulit ngayon. But we need to do our part. We need to act in generosity. We need to imitate God's radical generosity. We need to trust Him once again so that we can give back to Him. Let me end with this story. Sino sa inyo nagpunta ng feast conference? Buong konti lang. Buti na lang, konti lang, kasi ulitin ko yung story ako. Um, when Zion, my eldest son, was four years old, nagpunta sila ng nanay niya, si Moriel, yung my wife, nagpunta sila sa isang coffee shop na hindi ka makakapagbanyo kung wala kang digital code. Alam niyo kung anong coffee shop yun? Itago na lang natin siya sa pangalang, huwag natin sasabihin na Starbucks yun ha na kailangan may code pa. So, dapat umorder ka, merong, merong resibo. Ang problema, ito, yung misis ko, naitapon niyo yung resibo. So, nung naihi yung anak ko, si Zion, sabi ni Zion, Mami, naihi ako. Punta tayo ng CR. Punta tayo ng toilet. So, para makapasok sila, tinawag ng misis ko, ni Moriel, yung barista, tapos pinabuksan nila yung digital code nung, nung, nung restroom. Pasok na si Zion doon, andun siya sa loob, umiihi. So ngayon, si Moriel, nandun siya sa, liko, sa, sa labas nung pinto ng Starbucks. Nagte-text, nagsuscroll ng Instagram, ng Facebook. Tapos, habang nagsuscroll siya, na-realize siya, sampung, oh, sampung minuto na yung nakalipas. Hindi pa lumalabas si Zion. Ganyan tayo, di ba, kakakascroll na aliw tayo. Tapos na-realize siya, ay, nasa na nga ba yung anak ko? So bumalik siya, bumatok siya, sabi niya, Zion! Zion, nandiyan ka pa ba? Tapos, narinig niya si Zion, Mami, Mami, nandito ako. Mami, hugas puwet. Kaya pala tagal lumabas. <laughs> Nag number two pala. And so, dali-daling tinawag ng misis ko, yung barista, tapos pinabuksan yung CR. Pagpasok ang ganon, eto na. Habang hinuhugasan niya ng puwet yung anak ko, sabi ni Moriel sa kanya, my wife, sabi niya, Oh, Zion, kanina ka pa pala tapos. Ba't hindi ka nagsasalita? Sabi, hindi ko kasi alam, mami, kung nandiyan ka sa labas eh. Paano, sabi ng, ng nanay niya, paano, Zion, kung hindi na kita tawagin? Paano mo ako planong tawagin? Paano kung hindi na kita balikan? And you know what my four-year-old son said? Pakinggan niyo, sabi niya, Eh, mami, basta alam ko, pupuntahan mo ako eh. Kasi ang tagal ko, sasabihin mo, nasa na kaya si Zion? Bakit ang tagal lumabas? Tapos bubuksan mo yung pinto. Alam ko, bubuksan mo yung pinto. And you know why am I sharing this to you? Because maybe some of you here, you are in a bad place right now. Maybe you are in a tough situation. Maybe you are worried right now. My prayer is this, that you may have the childlike faith of Zion. A faith that knows how much his parent cares. Kilala niya yung tanay niya eh. Hindi siya pababayaan noon. A faith that knows that no matter what happens, God will come to save you and rescue you. I know, brothers and sisters, you know who your God is. Look at his track record. When you needed provision, God was your provider. When you needed healing, God was your healer. When you are in pain, God is your comforter. When you are unfaithful, God is faithful. And even when you are undeserving, God is generous. How generous? How, ask me how generous. Jesus gave His life for you. So what is it that you are worrying about today? Let me tell you this. Stop worrying. Trust in His generosity. Because if God can give His life for you, what else can He not give? Trust in His generosity. It's His joy to give you the best. Amen? Let's come into worship. Close your eyes, bow down your heads.
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift your hands in surrender. Let me pray for you. Father in heaven, we come to you knowing fully well that you are a good God. But Lord, forgive us for the times that we doubt your goodness, that we doubt your generosity. Alam namin, Panginoon, mayaman ka. Alam natin, alam namin, Panginoon, that you are capable. But Lord, today, we are rekindling the trust in you. We are surrendering. Take away our worries. Take away our fear. We know who you are, O oh God. You are the God who provides. You are the God who heals. You are the God who is faithful. You are the God who is generous. Whatever it is that is troubling our heart right now, we surrender them to you, God. We want to focus on you, on your goodness, on your faithfulness. And as we trust and surrender to you, we expect, in faith, we claim that all our dreams, every need that we need, will come to us. This we pray. Pamilya, kapag, ka nag, kapag nagigipit, doon dapat lalo nagtutulungan. And as one feast bigutan family, I urge you, I challenge you, more, give more. Meron pong dalawang envelopes na nandyan. Ano po yan dalawang envelope na yan? The white one is our usual weekly offer. Ito po ang request ko sa inyo. Um, 
Can you give more here? Yung weekly ninyo. Ang average attendance po natin. Alam, I'm, a, I'm a math guy. I'm a data statistics guy. Um, we, we are around 400 to 500 people every Sunday. And then every Sunday, ang um, envelope po na nilalagay sa love offering nasa 160 to 200 envelopes. So I did the math. If, 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 if we give an extra 100 pesos more from our giving, we are going to cover the 20,000 difference every single week. But of course, yung iba sa inyo, yung iba sa inyo, estudyante pa lang, okay lang, but increase it, kahit hindi 100. Some of you here, you have businesses, pero kayong gaganda ng trabaho ninyo. If you can give more than 100, it will be a great help so that we can get to continue what God is doing here at the feast. Do you want the feast to continue? Blessing lives? Let's respond in generosity. Yan po ang request ko sa inyo. Tapos make it a habit every single Sunday. Every single Sunday. My prayer is that yung 160 to 200 envelopes, madagdagan na every week. Kung hindi ka pa nagbibigay, maybe this is the time that you start giving to the Lord. Amen? Ano po itong blue? The blue is our yearly special miracle offer. During Christmas, this is what we do. We, we I, I suggest, if you are going to attend next week and the, and, and the final feast, December 17th, huwag niyo po, po muna lag. Uwi niyo po muna, tapos, prayan niyo as a family, how much are you giving to the Lord sacrificially at the end of this year? Ano po itong blue envelope? Itong blue envelope po, ito po ay lahat po nito ay napupunta po panggastos extra ng ating feast for for our projects the following year. So pag meron tayong equipments, malalaking gastos, dito po natin kinukuha. Kapag may deficit po ang feast, dito rin po natin kinukuha along with I Give Club. And pag-pray po ninyo, pag-pray po ninyo, uwi ninyo, tapos pag-usapan nyo mag-asawa, kasama mga anak ninyo, magkano ibigyan natin sacrificially to the Lord. This is on top of our usual giving. Kaya, kumbaga, ito ang regalo natin kay Lord ngayong Pasko. And a part of our miracle offering for this year, let me tell you this, mapupunta po sa ating outreach in one of Feast Mercy Ministries this coming February or March next year. So, a part of your special offering, bibigay po natin sa mga kapatid natin na nangangailangan. So, I encourage you to give more yung amount na medyo aaray tayo. Sacrificial giving for the Lord. Amen? If you are not attending the feast for the next two weeks, pwede na niyong ibigay ito this week on top of the white one. But if you are going to attend next week and the, the Sunday after that, please take this home. Let the Lord speak to you. Pag-usapan yung pamilya. How do you want to bless the Lord and give back to Him this Christmas? Amen? So, can I invite you to stand up? First timers, please go over to the side. We have a welcome gift for you. Those who would like to be prayed over, please go over to the other side so that our pray over ministers can pray. Offerings for the Lord. Let's lift our offerings. Let me pray for our giving Father in heaven. We are swimming in an ocean of your blessings. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us this past month, this past year. And Lord, na itong lahat ng ibinibigay natin sa iyo, actually, Lord, di naman amin ito. We own nothing. This is your gift to us. Kaya marapat lamang, Panginoon, na ibalik namin sa iyo. Use this for your greater glory. And Lord, we know na hindi ka magpapatalo sa pagbibigay. In our faithfulness, you will outdo our generosity. At alam namin, Panginoon, hindi mo lang ito gagamitin para i-bless ang maraming tao, para i-bless ang mga nangangailangan ng iyong salita. You are going to use this. You are going to return this to us a hundredfold. Siksik, kliklik, at umaapaw. Because it's your joy to give the best to us. 
all these father we ask and pray and claim in Jesus name amen come brothers and sisters with joy give to God I'll see you next week God bless you